Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. This is Arco 55 in the T-44, Soviet Tier 8 medium tank. Can you believe there was once a time when you could say Soviet Tier 8 medium tank and the T-44 was the only thing that fit that category? Nowadays you'd struggle to count the number of Soviet Tier 8 medium tanks in the game with every finger that you have. You have the Object 416, you have the T-54 Mod 1, you have not one, not two, not three, not four, but five different variations on the T-44-100, you have the STG, and you have the STG Guard, the Object 274, and then finally you come to the T-44 itself. But even when this tank was the only Soviet Tier 8 medium tank in the game, nobody would ever accuse it of being overpowered. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was definitely an upgrade over the T-43, but it was a world away from the T-54 in terms of performance. And that's before we get started about all of the Soviet Tier 10 medium tanks. Even when there were no other Tier 8 mediums to choose from, the T-44 was still just a little bit kind of meh. It definitely has better agility, firepower and armour than the T-43, but that doesn't mean that the T-44's agility, firepower and armour are great, it just means that the T-43's is so abysmally bad. On top of all of that, the T-44 did have one massive weakness, and that was its incredibly fragile ammunition rack. Or, to be more accurate, ammunition racks, because they were scattered all over the vehicle, and without much in the way of armour to protect them. A nice first kill. The most vulnerable ammo rack was positioned at the front of the tank to the right of the driver, which meant that if you shot the T-44 in the right side of the lower glacis, you were practically guaranteed an ammo rack, which meant that if you took the T-44 into battle without the benefit of the wet ammunition stowage equipment module, you were basically asking for trouble. And in fact, I can clearly remember taking this thing in and battle multiple times with the wet ammo stowage and the safe stowage skill on the loader. And even with those precautions, this tank just loved to explode violently when one of its multiple ammo racks, but particularly the one on the right side of the front lower glacis, got hit during battle. And of course, don't forget this was in the bad old days before you had multiple uses on a repair kit, when it was a one-shot use consumable rather than something on a cooldown. So, in combination with the wet ammo rack, the safe stowage skill on the loader, I would forgo the use of a fire extinguisher and take two repair kits into battle on the T-44. And despite taking all of these precautions, it was not unusual in the T-44 to finish a battle either dead from an exploded ammo rack or firing one shot every 17 or 18 seconds because it had a damaged ammo rack. Nobody would ever call the T-44 an overpowered tank. Thankfully, those days are long gone. Mostly because, after a couple of years, and the introduction of innumerable other Tier 8 premium Soviet medium tanks, after they'd run out of actual tanks that they could put into the game and started having to make shit up, they were making shit up that they obviously wanted to sell to people, so they couldn't be completely shit. And that left the T-44 looking kind of bad. So its Amorak problems were mostly buffed out. Don't get me wrong, it still has that frontal ammo rack next to the driver, but it no longer detonates if somebody just looks at it funny. It does still have very, very good mobility. The armour, however, isn't great, although the whole armour is acceptable. But it's kind of the opposite of what we've come to expect of Soviet medium tanks. It does not have an impenetrable turret. And while the gun handling is pretty good, particularly if you have the LB-1 100mm gun, the penetration really, really sucks. It's the second worst penetration of any Tier 8 medium tank. And yes, I realise that every time I make a claim like that, half of you pause the video and then scramble to check the penetration values of all of the Tier 8 medium tanks. <laughs> Just so you can come back and say, actually, Jingles, fair enough. 190mm on a Tier 8 is pretty poor. And while the claim that it has the second worst penetration of any tier 8 medium tank was probably correct at the time of going to press. There is something like a 12 to 14 hour lead time between my recording this video and then it actually going live on YouTube and well, you know what Wargaming are like. 
in that length of time they could easily introduce another six tier 8 premium Soviet medium tanks. So the claim may not be true by the time you see this. That's all I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying here is that the T-44 was never a great tank. And it's not a bad tank. But it's a tank where you have to actually know what you're doing. It's not a tank that does it all for you. The LB-1 gun is fairly accurate, it has a reasonable aiming time and the reload isn't terrible. But the penetration sucks unless you're prepared to roll your face all over the 2 key. And if you're not, that means you kind of have to know what you're shooting at. The mobility is good which allows you to get around the battlefield quickly and take flanking shots into the more vulnerable sections of enemy tanks, which is as it should be in a medium tank, instead of just, you know, going hold down and firing gold at the problem, which is definitely an option in many, many other Soviet medium tanks, but not the T-44 because it doesn't have the turret for it. The mobility is very good though, possibly even on par with the T-54 at tier 9. But the T-54 has options that the T-44 does not. It has armour. It has that classic Soviet turret. The T-44 does not have that get out of jail free card. So when you see somebody doing well in a T-54, well, yeah, he's in a T-54. But if you see somebody doing well in a T-44, damn son, you must know something that nobody else does. And he probably does how to drive a medium tank properly without relying on gold ammo and impenetrable turrets. So when you see somebody playing a tank like the T-44, which let's face it, relies on its mobility rather than its armour for protection, although the upper glacis isn't bad, particularly in a game like World of Tanks where again, let's face it, the maps are basically very thinly disguised corridors masquerading as open maps that don't really allow tanks that live or die on their mobility to actually, you know, use that mobility, except in the most basic sense when a flank has already been overrun and it's a rush to get to the other flank and mop up the survivors. So when you see somebody in a T-44 doing well, despite all of those handicaps, you know he knows a thing or two. I can't tell you how refreshing it is to see somebody playing a medium tank the way medium tanks are supposed to be played. Admittedly, that was because Arco 55 was forced to play the T-44 in the way that you're supposed to play a medium because if you try to do it any other way, you'll just die. Because the T-44 doesn't have all of the other crutches that many other medium tanks at this kind of level and higher do. Impenetrable turrets with either no or extremely hard to hit weak spots that allow them to zip around the battlefield like a medium tank when it suits them and then go hold down like a heavy tank when it suits them. Arco had to play like a medium tank. And that's not easy in World of Tanks these days. So, Arco 55, you not only have my congratulations for an extremely good result, but you also have my respect for bucking the trend, refusing to go along with a crowd, and doing things the way they're supposed to. Congratulations. Everybody else, hope you enjoyed today's video. Short though it was, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.